Hi everyone! Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom, and I'm Leah. And today we are going to handle our news watch unit. It also just happens to be our all English lecture, so we'll try not to speak any Chinese or other languages in today's lesson. And we've got a couple of news stories we're going to talk about today. So one of our first stories is about UNEP, and what are they doing? They're announcing success in eliminating leaded fuel. So this is something that is、uh, a problem historically in the world. When you have gas that has lead in it, it puts lead out into the air, or it puts lead out into the water, or out into the soil. And we're going to talk about that some today because it can be a problem for people's health. Right, and the other story we're going to talk about has to do with elephants in Sri Lanka. I guess they're trying to protect the health and safety of the elephants there in Sri Lanka. We'll find out some of those details as our lesson continues. So let's get into it now, everybody. Let's read through the entire contents of our lesson, and then we'll come back to discuss it. UNEP announces success in eliminating leaded fuel. After nearly 20 years of work, the United Nations Environment Program (UNEP) proudly announced in August 2021 that no country now uses leaded gasoline for vehicles. This is a global victory for health and the environment. In 1922, a certain kind of lead was first used as a fuel additive. It improved engine performance, and by the 1970s, almost all gasoline in the world included lead. However, the consequences for humans and the environment were dire. As leaded fuel burns, it contaminates air, water, and soil alike. When humans are exposed to lead, they suffer heart disease, cancer, and strokes. Lead is also responsible for a variety of developmental issues in children. By the 1980s, most countries had stopped using leaded fuel, but there were still a few holdouts in the early 2000s. UNEP coordinated with governments and private companies, as well as civic groups, to find ways to end the use of leaded fuel in those countries. Their success shows that humanity can fix mistakes it has made, which gives hope to those working on other initiatives related to transportation changes. Strict new laws in Sri Lanka aim to improve life for elephants. In Sri Lanka, a new animal protection law requires all tamed elephants to have biometric ID tags. The new law also forbids riders from drinking while they handle their elephants. And prohibits putting elephants under two years old to work. Elephants are important for cultural and religious reasons in this small country off the coast of India. In fact, they're considered sacred, and killing an elephant can be met with the death penalty. However, elephants are also important to tourism, and the money that comes from tourism can make it hard to enforce laws that already exist to protect elephants. The new law takes this into account, specifying limits that will still allow attractions like elephant rides. The new law was rolled out because a record number of elephants died in Sri Lanka in 2019. Of the 361 that died that year, 85% can be attributed to human causes. It is hoped that the new laws will prevent such high numbers from occurring in the future. Welcome back, everybody. So we are going to now start our news watch for today, and we're going to look into this UNEP. Whenever you see、um, just a bunch of letters together, you know you've got a short form of something, and we're going to get to what that is. Actually, I'll tell you now. It's the United Nations Environment Program, and that is. Short UNEP is short for that, and the UNEP announces success in eliminating leaded fuel. So they announce success. They have reported to the world that they have been successful, or they have won a battle、uh, in eliminating leaded fuel. So they're eliminating means to 
get rid of something as close to entirely as you can to completely wipe out. And what are they wanting to wipe out? Well, they want to wipe out leaded fuel. Right, and remember, lead is an element. It's a metal that is very, very heavy, and we we're, we're using it as a verb here, which means the fuel has lead in it. So it is leaded fuel or fuel with lead. Now, after nearly twenty years of work, the United Nations Environment Program, or UNEP. Proudly announced in August 2021 that no country now uses leaded gasoline for vehicles. So this has been going on for quite some time. I remember you could still buy leaded gasoline. Oh, gee, when I was、uh, much younger, but it seemed later on it was no longer available. If you went to gasoline stations in the United States, you could get regular fuel or unleaded fuel. But I think、uh, regular is just、uh, totally gone now because regular had had lead in it, and、uh, you can't buy that anymore. But luckily, the United Nations Environment Program was able to fight that issue of leaded fuel being around. But if you notice here, "program" is written with an extra "m e," and that's curious because in the United States, anyway, it would be "p r o g r a m." But here, with the extra "m e," I guess we're getting the British spelling of this. Indeed. So yeah, sometimes you see that spelling, and that's the name of this program. And they were proud to announce this in August of last year that no country in the world now uses leaded gasoline for vehicles, and this is a global victory for health and the environment. So try to think back, everybody, when the last time was that you bought leaded fuel.、Uh, it may have been quite some time. I remember here in Taiwan there was a campaign against、uh, two-stroke gasoline for certain. Kinds of motorcycles, but they have gradually eliminated that. I used to、uh, ride a Vespa scooter many years ago, and it required that kind of fuel, but it's gradually been eliminated. Although I think you can buy the mix or something like that, but I'm not quite sure how that、uh, works if you still have an old Vespa. But in any case,、uh, that's not good because、uh, leaded gasoline is not good for the environment. Now let's move on now to the next paragraph. Here it says. In 1922, a certain kind of lead was first used as a fuel additive. If you add something to something else, then that thing is called an additive. It is included in the original substance. And you might think that that is a good thing because our next sentence says it improved engine performance. So it helped engines to work better or more efficiently. And because of that, by the 1970s. Almost all gasoline in the world included lead.、Um, all the different places that were putting out gasoline said, "Hey, look at this! We put lead in the gasoline. The cars run better. The engines run better. So this must be a great thing. So let's include lead. Let's make a lead additive." Right, but、uh, they did not stop to think that that would cause harm to the environment or to people. They were only interested in improving engine performance, and that's what it did. It did improve engine performance, and by the 1970s, almost all gasoline in the world included lead. So, if you wanted to buy gasoline in say 1975 or something, you could get gasoline that had lead in it. However, the consequences for humans and the environment. Were dire. So here we've got consequences.、Uh, that's the plural form of the noun consequence. Is the result of something. Okay. So for example,、uh, if you don't like to see the doctor and you refuse to go see the doctor, well, the consequence of that is you might、uh, get a terrible disease, and by the time they discover it, it will be too late. So yes, we always have to suffer from our own consequences. And again, consequence here can be both singular and plural. And we oftentimes will hear the expression, "Well, you're going to have to face the consequences," which just means that, well, you know, if you're going to do something, there might be some results from that, and those results are maybe not what you want, but you're going to have to deal with them, and those are the consequences. So you have to face the consequences. For example, my daughter recently wanted to leave a class. And she had to face the consequences that her teacher in the class might not be too happy about her leaving the class. But she's willing to face the consequences to get out of the class and do something different. So the consequences for humans and the environment 
were dire. So it's not just for people that it was a problem; it's also the environment that was affected by the consequences of adding lead to the gasoline. And the consequences were not just, well, you know, you have to blow your nose because it gives you allergies. It the consequences were dire. Dire means they were very, very serious and would affect you very profoundly or deeply. Indeed, so the、uh, harm to the environment was dire, and as leaded fuel burns, it contaminates air, water, and soil alike. Here, alike just means all those things listed above are included. So it it contaminates air, water, and soil alike. And when humans are exposed to lead, they suffer various ilmen il illnesses. Uh, such as heart disease, cancer, and stroke. So here we've got the word "expose," and it's part of the phrase "to be exposed to something," which means you come in contact with that thing. If you remember the old film cameras, if you wanted to take a picture, the film would be exposed to light. Okay, you would、uh, take the picture, the shutter would open, and the film would be exposed to light. Here, humans come in contact with lead; they are exposed to lead. Right, and you can be exposed to lead not just by, like, saying drinking lead in your water. It can also be an air exposure. So the lead can be in the air, get on your skin, and it kind of just gets into the system. So this is a serious issue. I mean, I believe this is the case with this anyway, because that is the case in many、uh, situations with pollution in the air that it can go straight in through the skin. So this is a very, very serious issue、um, because. It can lead to heart disease, cancer, and stroke, and that's probably just to name a few. And these are things that you don't want to mess with because they are very dire. They are very serious.、Um, stroke, for example,、um, if you would have a stroke, maybe、uh, you have a blockage somewhere where your、uh, blood can't get to another part of the body. And one way that you might check for that is your friend might tell you smile. And if you smile and you can only smile with half of your side of your mouth, then they'll say, "Ooh, you might have had a stroke," or you can't raise your hand. Hands, or when you speak, you speak with slurred words. Lead is also responsible for a variety of developmental issues in children. So, if you think about it, a lot of times with lead paint,、uh, this was something in the past that they said, "Well, if you have lead paint in your house, you need to have it removed." Because one thing that children might do is they might, well, okay, go over and lick the wall or <laughs> or chew on the windowsill, and then they ingest. Or they are exposed to、um, that lead paint, and this can cause developmental issues in children. It can cause their brains to have problems、um, as they are developing. Okay. Into adults.、Uh, yeah, and that carries on into adulthood. So here in the next paragraph, it says. By the 1980s, most countries had stopped using leaded fuel, but there were still a few holdouts in the early 2000s.、Oh, thousands. Now, a holdout is, some, is somebody who continues to do something that everybody else has stopped doing.、Uh, for example, most people use smartphones, but、uh, there are a few holdouts. Every once in a while, you see somebody with an old cell phone, and they're actually tapping the keys with the old cell phone. There are a few holdouts there. You see. That every once in a while, and in the world, there were still a few holdouts in the early 2000s. There were still some countries that were using leaded gasoline. I just wanted to mention right here when we're talking about the early 2000s, you might have heard the expression "in the nots," and that's N A U G H T S. The nots is 2000 to 2009. It's that decade. So if you want to say, "Oh yeah, in the early nots," that means 2001, 2002. It's not commonly used. It is very slang, but it has caught on in popularity. So moving back in, it says U N E P. Coordinated with governments and private companies, as well as civic groups, to find ways to end the use of leaded fuel in those countries. So, when you coordinate with somebody, you work together with them. So, you try and balance things out for what they want and what you want, and you cooperate. So, you've got the C O O. P coop cooperate just like the C O O R coordinate coordinate. You work together. 
And we've got civic groups here. Of course, they have to do with a city or town. Like in Taipei, of course, we've got、uh, Civic Boulevard. I believe it's called in English. And so they're working together to find ways to end the use of leaded fuel in those countries. And their success shows that humanity can fix mistakes it has made, which gives hope to those working on other initiatives related to transportation changes. So yes, humanity or human beings, people in the world can. Get together and fix those mistakes. So I guess there's hope after all. I would hope so. And what we are going to find out is that if we get rid of the leaded fuel in the environment, then there will be less lead in the air, less lead in the soil, less lead in water, and eventually, hopefully, people will have fewer issues with lead being present in their day-to-day -day lives. Okay, that brings us to the midpoint in today's lesson. Let's take a break, but stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, we're back now, and we're going to continue looking at Newswatch. The second story says strict new laws in Sri Lanka aim to improve life for elephants. Well, when I hear improving life for an animal, I'm always happy to hear that because it means we're looking at the animals that are out there in the wild or that are out there in captivity, and we're trying to think about how to make their lives better, a little bit safer.、Um, nobody's hopefully eating them, <laughs> and also their day-to-day -day lives might be a little bit more healthy. Right. So, if you know about Sri Lanka, you know that elephants are an important part of their culture and part of their society. So now they've got some strict new laws that aim to improve life for elephants. They want to improve the life of elephants in Sri Lanka. So here in Sri Lanka, a new animal protection law requires all tamed elephants to have biometric ID tags. So these are tamed elephants, elephants that are living with humans and they're not running wild. In forests and in the mountains and things like that. So, if you have a tamed elephant, you need to have a biometric ID tag. And here, biometric just means it has to do with your body, and it's registering information about your location. I don't know. Maybe it、uh, registers your heartbeat or your your blood pressure,、uh, your a, blood type, maybe, or the, the con, fingerprint. The con, yeah, fingerprints、uh, or tusk prints or whatever. Yeah. What、Who、are you going to do for an elephant? Are you going to get the the footprint there or a voice print? The way they go. <laughs> There may be ways to identify elephants. You never know. Like、uh, yeah. with us, of course, we use fingerprints or、uh, the iris in our eyes and things like that. So these are ID tags for the elephants, so they can tell who they are. The new law also forbids riders from drinking while they handle their elephants. Now, these are people who are riding on their elephants, not people riding beside their elephant on a scooter. They're actually talking about riders of elephants. You cannot drink and ride your elephant. Okay, so the new law. Forbids this from happening. If you forbid something, it means you strongly do not allow it, and you normally will include a punishment of some sort, either financial or another kind of punitive thing, like maybe you're put in jail or you have to pay some sort of money、uh, if you do not follow this law or rule. Your parents can also forbid you from doing something, and that means they very strongly stop you from doing it. So I. Forbid you from watching TV before 7 p.m. at night.、Um, then you should not watch TV before then, or you will be in big trouble. The new law forbids riders from drinking while they handle their elephants. Now, this handle is talking about working with, so it's not talking about touching them in the sense of like picking them up. Because normally, when you think about handling something, you know, you think about picking something up. Don't think people are going to be picking up elephants. They're just,、uh, you know, handling them. They're taking them around. They're taking care of them and stuff like that. So of course they cannot drink when they're handling their elephants. And also the new law prohibits putting elephants under two years old to work. So here we've got the word prohibit. That's similar in meaning to forbid. The law prohibits or forbids putting elephants that are under two years of age to work. So the elephants need to be at least two years old before they can start working. 
Now, moving on now to the next paragraph. Here it says, "Elephants are important for cultural and religious reasons in this small country off the coast of India." So this sentence tells us a couple of things. It says that elephants are important for various reasons in Sri Lanka, and those reasons are cultural and religious in nature. So they have to do with the culture itself, and they have to do with the religion. I believe they're mostly Buddhist in Sri Lanka. There, so they must have some kind of connection. There with Buddhism, and this sentence also tells us the location of Sri Lanka. It's off the coast of India. So it's off to the right, the bottom right of India, kind of towards Thailand on that side. So when there was a really huge tsunami, I believe in two thousand five, two thousand six, early two thousand six, right around that time,、um, that、uh, affected people in Sri Lanka as well and in that uh, uh, eastern coast of India. In fact, they're considered sacred, and killing an elephant can be met with the debt. Met with the death penalty, so if something is sacred, it is considered to be holy. It is held in very, very high respect, and it's almost considered to have、um, a religious power or so. So, elephants are considered to be sacred in Hindu religion. I believe cows are considered to be sacred. So, elephants are considered to be sacred in Sri Lanka, and killing an elephant has serious consequences. Consequences. It can be met with the death penalty. Met with here means you can receive the death penalty. You might be met with a surprise when you walk into your house and someone is throwing a surprise birthday party for you. So you are, are have been met with a surprise. Right, and if somebody catches you actually killing an elephant, it could mean death. You might be executed by a firing squad or a guillotine or whatever method they use there. So in any case, here you don't want to kill an elephant in Sri Lanka because those animals are sacred, and of course they have important cultural and religious significance for this small country. However, elephants are also important to tourism, and the money that comes from tourism can make it. Hard to enforce laws that already exist to protect elephants. So that's the one thing here. Tourism. Lots of people go to Sri Lanka, and they want to ride the elephant. Hey, ride a ride an <laughs> elephant and go back home and tell your friends that you did this. So of course,、uh, lots of people want to ride elephants there. They're important to tourism. I can't imagine what else you would use them for in tourism,、uh, other than giving people rides. But of course, if、uh, you want a, to ride an elephant, they're going to charge. You some money, so of course they make money from that, and because they're making money from that, then it's hard to enforce laws that already exist to protect the elephants. So of course you want to enforce laws. You have the laws. That's one thing, and then it's another thing to actually enforce the laws. Like here in Taiwan, of course there are lots of traffic laws that simply aren't enforced because、uh, there just aren't enough police officers to pull over all the scooters that are jumping red lights and things like that. A lot of times, the laws just simply aren't enforced. Not only here, but other countries as well. Well, you know, it's quite quite difficult to enforce this law because it's related to tourism. But the new law takes this into account. If something takes something into account, it means it has been considered, and there have been some accommodations or some special things done to make sure it's all going to be okay. So this law has thought about tourism, and they're making sure the tourism factor is going to be okay, so they can still enforce the law, and they. They've done this by specifying limits that will still allow attractions like animal rides. So they have specified limits. They have put in a limitation that, like for example, when you're out riding on the highway, they have specified limits as to how fast you can go. Some places might be 70 kilometers per hour. Some places might be 90 or 100 kilometers per hour. But there are limits that are specified. So there are signs put up there specifying how fast you can. 
Right, and of course they're specifying limits that will still allow attractions, like elephant rides. So yes, an attraction, of course, is something that attracts people. They go there, they pay money to see it, or they pay money to do something. So of course this is a special attraction in Sri Lanka,、uh, in Taiwan. Here, of course, we've got lots of attractions, namely the night markets or the museums, or the mountainous areas and things like that. Those are wonderful attractions that you can check out. So yes, that's one of the big attractions in Sri Lanka, and yes, indeed,、uh, that's something that's、um, that's an area of、uh, the economy there in Sri Lanka that is difficult to enforce the laws that are there to protect the elephants. Now, the new law was rolled out because a record number of elephants died in Sri Lanka in 2019. So just a couple of years ago. They had a lot of elephants die, and so they thought, "Hmm, we've got to do something." So they rolled out this new law. They、uh, came up with this new law. It went through the legislature, and it passed. And now it's the law. And I love the way they use this "rolled out." It almost sounds like it's dough being rolled out, but it's kind of more like it's a piece of paper that's being, you know, rolled out like the old style when you when the king's proclamations are are discussed. Oh, now listen here, this is going. Going to be the law, in a way, it's like that too. But what it really means is that it's put into effect. It's kind of thrown out there, and it's put into effect. And well, they had to do it, right? And a record number of elephants had died, so that caused the need for them to do that. And that happened in 2019. Of the 361 that died in that year, 85 percent can be attributed to human causes. So, 15 percent of the elephants that died in 2019, well, they died maybe because of old age or an accident. But 85 percent of those deaths were something that people caused to happen. I don't know what that could mean. If that's malnourishing an animal and causing it to die of starvation. Or mistreating an animal and causing it to die of being injured or something like that. But that's very, very sad to hear. It is, and that of course is a high number. So humans are responsible for that, and it is hoped that the new laws will prevent such high numbers from occurring in the future. So yes,、yeah, save the elephants. Okay, we need to do that in Sri Lanka so the elephants can continue to live and survive. I believe the elephants in Sri Lanka would be the Asian elephant and not the African elephant. And the African elephants have another problem that we can probably discuss some other. Time. And as well, we could also discuss another time other areas that are doing things to protect the quality of living for elephants, such as Thailand, where they are trying to make sure that elephants these days are not used for tourist attractions so often, and maybe that people can go and do volunteer work in Thai、uh, camps where elephants are and help take care of elephants, as opposed to riding them. Very good. I don't suppose you've ever ridden a, an elephant before. Oh, I have. Yes, definitely. Oh, you definitely. have. <laughs>、okay. I have not. I've never really been interested in that. But in any case, some people like that sort of thing. And hopefully, when people ride on elephants, it won't harm them too much. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. It's time now to say goodbye. So that's it for today. Thank you for joining us, and please join us again next time for another edition of our program. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom, and I'm Leah. Goodbye. Goodbye.